Welcome to physics class on force on moving charge in uniform magnetic and electric field for CBSE class 12 chapter 4 moving charges and magnetism now forces on a moving charge in uniform electric and magnetic field we may divide into separately into two the first one in uniform electric field now when charged particle is placed inside an electric field then it experiences a force that force is known as Lorentz electric force now let's take it a uniform electric field between the two plates okay which is connected to a source of EMF like this one plate here another plate here so the one plate is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the other plate is connected to the positive terminal of the battery so that there will be a strong electric field between the two plates and moreover this electric field is uniform when a charged particle is placed somewhere here it will experience a force and it will move in parallel to the force either it may be moving toward the negative plate or it may be toward the positive plate depending upon the charge is positive or negative got it but now when the charge particle is moving perpendicular to the field okay then the direction of the charge particle will not be parallel to the the direction of the force I mean will not be parallel to the uh, electric field rather it will take a parabolic part okay if a charged particle Q is placed inside the uniform electric field we know that it will experience a force and that force we call it as what Lorentz electric force clear and the direction of the force acting on to that charge particle will be parallel to the direction of the electric field if it is positive charge then it will be going in the direction of electric field if it is negative charge then it will be against the direction of electric field E clear electric field E is in this direction from positive plate to the negative plate right now consider a charge particle Q of mass M moving with velocity v okay moving with velocity v along ox ox means this is the x axis let's take it okay along ox means from o to x in this direction inside the electric field okay which is along the x axis that means your electric field is along x axis and your charge particle is moving perpendicular to it that means it moves along the direction of x axis with a velocity v clear ah, as shown it here right now the time taken the time taken by the charge particle to traverse inside the field of distance x now the charge particle will move in this inside the field and the time taken will be what s by v we know that distance travel is equal to what velocity into time so if you want to find time then it will be what x by v got it and so let's use it such uh, expressions to find out this force on a moving charge in uniform electric field got it now see if a charged particle is placed inside the uniform electric field it will experience a force as I said it will be what QE and it will be called as what Lorentz electric force got it and in some textbook it may be denoted by FE also got it E for electric right uh, yes consider a charge plus Q that means we are taking a positive charge of mass M moving with velocity V along OX inside the uniform electric field E along y-axis as shown in this adjoining figure okay now let's try to express time in terms of this known quantity x and v so the time taken by the charged particle okay 
to traverse inside the field of distance x of x means this is the uh, what distance of this electric field e that a charged particle should move uh, and the acceleration along o y are given by what this t is equal to x by v velocity is equal to distance divided by time or you can say distance is equal to velocity into time from that you take it this t is equal to x by v where x is a distance traversed by the charged particle or you can say also the the weight of the electric field e and acceleration a from your newton second law acceleration a is equal to what force by mass right so force is nothing but your Lorentz electric force okay QE divided by M and M is nothing but as we have defined as what mass of the charged particle okay so your acceleration will be in the direction of electric field E got it A and E got it so your acceleration will be in the direction of electric field E right <coughs> now and acceleration as I'm just repeating again okay this is QE by M the displacement Y of the charged particle in the direction of the electric field E moving what during the time T can be expressed as now let's try to put this T and A expression of T and A in this equation that means kinematic equation S is equal to UT plus half AT square so your displacement or distance rather not displacement it should be distance distance y that means it is traveled by the charged particle the particle or a vertical distance of what x now y i mean y the vertical displacement y this will be equal to what ut u means zero t means that t x by v okay plus half this is a and this is t square so you replace it all those a and t here in this expression kinematic expression s is equal to u t plus half a t square in this and you can express it y is equal to what q e by twice m v square by into x square the initial velocity before entering the electric field e the initial velocity of the charged particle was zero so we put it that u is equal to zero then you get it y is equal to what this expression but this expression q e divided by twice m v square okay you are sending that uh, velocity okay there is no acceleration uh, no velocity change in the velocity in that particular direction got it so what happened when we send it what happened we send that v as a constant okay so what happened your q charge particle of the charge okay and the charge on the charge particle the electric field this m mass of the charge particle velocity of the charge particle these are all constant got it as long as you are not uh, changing those parameters then this will remain constant so let's take it by a constant k so y is equal to k x square got it so this will be nothing but this is what a quadratic equation this is of the uh, quadratic equation as this is quadratic equation what happened the vertical distance okay in that diagram y that will be what expressed as y is equal to kx square so this above equation is a quadratic equation and hence the charge particle moves along a parabolic path inside the uniform electric field E so what happened when the charged particle is placed okay inside the electric field okay a stationary charge I mean a stationary charge inside the electric field E will experience a force Lorentz force and that Lorentz force will be in the direction of uh, the electric field if the charged particle is positive if it is negative then it will be directing parallel to the force uh, parallel to the electric field e but against the direction of the electric field e got it but if the charged particle is moving inside the electric field e perpendicular to the electric field e then the charged particle will move 
a parabolic part inside the electric field E. If the charged particle is positive, then the parabolic part will be moving toward the negative plate. If the charged particle is negative, then it will move a parabolic part okay, toward the positive plate. Got it? Yes. Let's try to see about the force on a moving charge in inside a uniform magnetic field. Okay. So this is the second one inside the magnetic field. So the force experienced by the charged particle when placed inside the magnetic field, that force is known as what Lorentz magnetic force. Okay. Let's try to do this Lorentz magnetic force. Got it? Now, see, if a charge is placed inside the magnetic field, okay, a stationary charge, I should say, if a charge at rest is placed inside the uniform electric field E, then uh, electro uniform uh, magnetic field, I should say, inside the magnetic field, it doesn't experience any force. So a stationary charge inside the magnetic field experience no force, we say like that, okay? Now let's consider a charged particle is moving, okay? A charged particle of charge Q, you can say, of charge Q, mass M, moves with a velocity V, making an angle with the X axis, okay? And this X axis is the direction of the magnetic field, uniform magnetic field, I mean, here. Got it? Like this. Let me see a little bit, uh, zoom in, okay? In this way. So what happened? Let a charge, small q, of mass, small m, moves with a velocity v, making an angle with Ox inside the magnetic field, b, okay? In the plane of the paper got it then the Lorentz magnetic force okay experienced by this charged particle inside the magnetic field will be given by F is equal to Q V cross B V vector cross B we call it that force as Lorentz magnetic force got it and it is expressed as like this the Lorentz force F is equal to what? Q V cross B. So V cross B, this is a vector quantity. V is moving along here. B is in this direction along X axis. Don't think that this B is moving in the plane of X, Y. Okay. It may be, it may not always be in the uh, plane of this X, Y. Maybe also somewhere not on the x y plane, okay, not lying on the x y plane somewhere here. In that case, also, it, this v vector will make an angle theta with the x axis. Got it now? As this uh, Lorentz magnetic force is a vector product, or rather, you can say cross product of vectors. What happened the direction of magnetic field uh, the direction of the force experienced by the charged particle f vector will be given by your right hand rule okay or you can also say that right hand curl rule got it if you try to curl by stretching your four fingers with a thumb mutually perpendicular to each other of your right hand and if you try to curl from the first vector to the second vector then the direction of the thumb will be the direction of this cross product or also you have you might have learned in your class 11 that the cross product of these two vector will be in a direction perpendicular to both the vector v and b vector okay so what happened if this charged particle okay if this charged particle, suppose if you take it like this, in this direction, then if the charged particle, okay, is moving in this direction, then what happened? The direction of the magnetic field, let's take it as uh, moving inside 
perpendicular to the plane of this paper okay moving inside means what this cross mark represents inward perpendicular to the plane of this paper and inward suppose if your magnetic field suppose if your magnetic field is inward let's take it at this point d okay inward means let's draw it in this direction inward so this is a direction of your this is a direction of your magnetic field b got it This is the direction of your magnetic field B somewhere here. Okay. And then what happened? You have to curl from this first vector to this second vector. That means this is in the direction of the plane of the paper. Let's take it. But this magnetic field B is inward. So what happened if you try to have that cross product from the first vector? If you try to curl your four fingers from the first vector this b to this direction b then the force will be along this direction that means toward the center of this so likewise if you do it somewhere here also for the velocity will be in this direction for magnetic field is getting inward at this point so what happened the force will be acting along this that means toward the direction okay toward the center of this circular part that means when the charged particle moves with some velocity v inside the magnetic field then what happens it will experience a force rather a Lorentz magnetic force which will be acting toward the center of the circular part got it and if you want to express it in magnitude then it will be q v b sin theta where theta is the angle between b vector and b vector okay yes Now resolving V, let's resolve it that V into two rectangular components V1 and V2. Okay, let's resolve it that V into two rectangular components V1 and V2. Suppose if this is your Y axis, this is your X axis like this. Okay, this direction is X axis and this is Y axis, right? And if your magnetic uh, electric field uh, rather the charged particle moves with a velocity v so let's represent this direction as what a uh, v vector and this angle is theta rather this x axis is nothing but the direction of the magnetic field got it so what happen if you try to resolve this v into two rectangular component along x axis that will be nothing but this will be v cosine of theta right and that along y axis it will be nothing but it will be v sine of theta got it so this v1 cos a uh, v cos theta let's denote it by v1 okay v1 is what the component of velocity along x axis or you can say cosine component of velocity the sine component of velocity v let's denote it for sake of simplicity by v1 got it so what happened after resolving these two into two rectangular components i mean the velocity then we will get it like this that components okay along x-axis will be denoted by v1 it will be equal to v cosine of theta along x-axis and the other one along y-axis denoted by v2 is equal to v sine theta okay so therefore your magnitude of that Lorentz magnetic force will be what a q v2 b before this we wrote it like that q v b sine of theta so v sine of theta you replace it by v2 got it as f is perpendicular to v2 now we have seen that your v is perpendicular your f is perpendicular to uh, v two right work then okay w is equal to f dot s2 let's take it that the distance move is s2 okay so work then into force okay dot product 
f dot s2 will be equal to 0 as s2 is along what that v2 got it so what happened your f cannot change the magnitude of the velocity v2 okay rather it changes only in the direction of the motion of the charged particle thus this force f the charged particle moves in a circular path and due to the component v1 it will also move in the direction of the magnetic field got it as can you understand this part yes as f is perpendicular to v2 okay your f will be perpendicular to v2 got it the force acting in that previous diagram i show you <coughs> one circular part like this now uh, let me show you okay the charged particle will move in a circular path like this so your component this v1 cos theta along x axis and the component v2 will be what v sin theta right so what happened if uh, the velocity component v2 is somewhere here at this point got it say v2 and the magnetic field inside got it and the magnetic field inside now what happened uh, the force experience will be perpendicular to both of these right v2 and b right so b vector and v2 vector is perpendicular that means it will be acting here got it so there will be no force okay along this line force is acting here in this direction perpendicular to v2 as well as perpendicular to magnetic field v so as your force f is perpendicular to your velocity then what happened there will not be no work done in the direction of v2 by this force okay so there will not be any change in the velocity of this v2 got it why because there is no work done here due to this force work done f into s2 suppose let's take it that s2 is along this got it then what happened force dot displacement vector that will be equal to zero because what force is perpendicular to that displacement the dot product will be zero so there will not be no force acting onto this and so there will not be any change in the magnitude of this v2 if suppose if your force is acting along this v2 then magnitude of v2 may increase if it is acting opposite to the direction of this velocity v2 then what happened velocity the magnitude of velocity v2 may decrease okay so as there the uh, force is acting perpendicular to this velocity then what happened there is no change in the magnitude because the work done by this force in the direction of this velocity will be equal to zero right so this force will not change no doubt the magnitude of v2 rather it will help in what increasing uh, in changing the direction only not in changing the magnitude rather it will help in the changing of the direction of this velocity okay so what happened does this force f acted onto the charge particle move in a circular path due to the component what happened v2 and due to the component v1 it will also move in the direction of the magnetic field okay what happened making with a circular turn okay this will move in a circular path like this and while moving along the circular path also the charged particle will move in the direction of the magnetic field that distance or that motion in the direction of the magnetic field it is nothing but it is due to this v1 component v1 component is what v cos theta so due to this component what happened the charged particle will move in a helical motion as it was shown in the uh, previous slide like this got it uh, like this got it so the charged particle will move in a circular part due to this v cos theta okay due to this v cos theta and this Due to this component v what two 
right uh, i mean b1 i think it must be b1 so due to due to this vertical component let me call it b sine theta what happen it will have to move with a what uh, yes this due to this what happen b2 sin b2 equal to b sin theta what happened this is due to this component b2 is equal to b sin theta the charge particle will move a circular part and due to this component that means b1 is equal to b cos theta due to this b1 component the charge particle will move a horizontal distance okay so while moving along a circular path it will have to come out like this in this motion okay we call it this motion as helical motion so when a charged particle is moving uh, okay inside the magnetic field making some angle then what happen the charged particle no doubt will move in a helical path got it it will have a circular path due to that what centripetal force and due to this uniform velocity component that means your b2 uh, i mean b1 b cos theta due to this the what happened charge particle has to move in the direction of the magnetic field so while taking that circular turn it will also have that horizontal displacement okay and let the displacement between one turn and the next turn alternate consecutive turn neighboring turn i mean let the distance moved by the charged particle let's denote it by this d and this distance d between the charged particles uh, between the part the circular between the circular part of the charged particle we call it this as pits of the what helix oh or we can call it as pits of the helical part of the charged particle inside the magnetic field okay so let's try to express it all these things in terms of uh, that uh, this non quantity let's try to express it this d also in terms of non quantity okay and moreover we will try to find out the time period okay for a circular part for one circular part as well as we will try to find the frequency also okay let's try to express it so when the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the paper and directed inward and the particle is moving in the plane of the paper as i said what happen at every point the direction of the magnetic field on the charged particle will be toward the center of the circular part as we have said okay but due to the component b cos theta that means in the direction of that magnetic field we denote it by v1 okay the charged particle cover a linear distance in the direction of the magnetic field okay we have already said this one so under the combined effect of the two component velocities okay the part of the charged particle will be helical whose axis is parallel to the direction of the magnetic field got it so that means it will move in the direction of electric field got it now lorentz magnetic force provides the necessary centripetal force that means your lorentz force uh, q b to b or q b b sin theta that lorentz force will experience the charged uh, particle okay this force lorentz magnetic force this will provide the necessary centripetal force for the charged particle to move in a circular path and we know that the centripetal force is given by what mb square by r got it mb square by r let me zoom it a little bit okay so your lorentz force will be equal to what mb2 square by r this v2 now instead of that what your v1 cos theta we have to take as v sin of theta got it so your lorentz magnetic force is what uh, q v to b and you try to equate it with this lorentz uh, magnetic force with the centripetal force then you can cancel this v2 and v2 and what you have will be what you will have that as b sin theta that means b2 will be equal to what b q r divided by m 
Got it? That is what I am said. I have said this B sine theta will be equal to B Q R by M. What is this B sine theta? Actually, this is what your B two, right? But the angular velocity omega, as it is moving like this in uh, helical part in the direction of magnetic field, it must be having its angular velocity. So let omega be the angular velocity of that charged particle moving in a helical part. So your omega will be equal to what B two by r. We know that B is equal to omega r. Okay. So instead of B, you replace it by V two. Our case is V two. So V two divided by r. What is this V two? It is nothing but V sine theta. Okay. So V sine theta will be. B sine theta will be equal to B2, so we replace it this B2 by V sine theta by R, and then this B sine theta by R means what? You replace it this B sine theta instead of that, and R will be there here like like this. So if you cancel this R and R, then you will have as what? B uh, omega will be equal to B Q by M. Okay, if you cancel it this, okay. So after cancelling, what happen? Your omega will be what? B Q by M, and we also know that omega is equal to what? We know that omega is equal to what? This is an angular velocity. So total angle described divided by the total time period. We call it this as. What angular velocity? So you replace this omega here, and then you will get this expression. So you try to express again one by t, where t is nothing but this will be the time period. Okay, time taken by the charged particle to revolve that circular part once. Okay, that time we call it as time period. Got it? So one by time period we call it as what frequency. Got it? So you try to express this frequency in terms of known quantities. What magnetic field, the charge, okay, divided by its mass. So all these are all known quantity. So let's try to express this either time period. You can express time period as like this also. No doubt, time period or magnetic field. You can you can both express it in terms of these what. Known quantities two pi m b q. All these are no, all known quantities, and it is a constant quantity. Got it? So this constant quantity you can express it t as like this twice pi m divided by b q. Okay. So what happened? The pitch of the helix, as I said, which was denoted by small d, can be found out from this known time period t. Okay. Your Pitch of this helix, it is nothing but it is a linear distance covered by the charged particle inside the magnetic field in a time equal to what this time period of the helix. So your d will be equal to v1 t. What is this v1? It is that uniform velocity v cos theta along x-axis. So as the Velocity is uniform. You can express as distance travel is equal to velocity into time, and that time will be the time of that uh, time period of that what charged particle. Okay. So if you multiply it, then you will get it like this: v cos theta twice pi m by b q. So up to this, it is the portion of that of your what charged particle moving. Inside the uniform electric field. So now let's in the next class, uh, in the next part, in the next topic, let's try to do about that of a force on a current carrying conductor when placed inside the electric, uh, inside the magnetic field. Now let's take it a conductor or rather a cylindrical conductor of length L having cross-sectional area capital A. Okay. And place inside the magnetic field B, okay, in this direction, making an angle theta with that of the current that is flowing inside the cylindrical conductor. That means theta is the angle between what magnetic field B and 
the current element that is flowing inside the conductor IL got it I is a scalar quantity if I say IL then it will be a vector quantity along this direction got it now when the charge when the electric current is flowing inside this conductor so let's take it that this conductor is flowing the current from X prime to X okay let's take it this as the origin the position of the electron inside the conductor as the origin so from uh, x prime to x the current flows that means the current is flowing along the positive x axis positive x direction then what happened your electron rather your free electron must be moving opposite to it got it so whatever we are taking the current this current is a conventional current so electron the free electron moves in this direction with a velocity known as your drip velocity vd okay so your electron will be moving along this direction whereas the current is moving opposite to it that means along the positive x axis okay electron is moving in the negative x axis whereas current is flowing in the uh, conductor along the positive x axis now this what conduct inside the conductor free electron this free electron is also a charge right so what happened when these charge let me call it for a time being as charge when this charge particle e if it moves in this direction inside the magnetic field why because conductor is placed inside the magnetic field so rather naturally what happened your charge particle this negative charge electron will experience that force what we call as Lorentz magnetic force and that Lorentz magnetic force experienced by these negative charges uh, E will be equal to what minus E what Q instead of Q you will have as E why I'm giving minus because this is a negative charge so minus E B cross B where B is nothing but a drip velocity VD so instead of the velocity of this electron what happened you have to use as drip velocity VD so VD vector cross B vector will be the Lorentz magnetic force experienced by this negative charge E so if I am going to write that Lorentz magnetic force then it will be like this your Lorentz magnetic force experienced by your charge particle that means electron free electron that Lorentz magnetic force will be equal to minus E drip velocity instead of velocity we will have drip velocity cross B vector like this okay so the direction of this what Lorentz electric uh, magnetic force will be just opposite to that of the charged particle when we try to find the direction of these Lorentz magnetic force due to this electron what happened here you have to see that this is minus if it is positive charge then we have to use that right hand curl rule okay but here from the first vector to the second vector if you curl it the direction of the thumb opposite to it okay opposite to the direction of the thumb the force will be acting okay from the first vector if you try to curl it to the second vector the direction of the thumb will be the direction of positive E but being this is minus E the direction of the force will be in the direction opposite to the thumb of your right hand when you try to curl from the first vector to the second vector got it so let's see the description part okay so consider a straight cylindrical conductor okay pq pq right of length l the length of the conductor taken is l having cross-sectional area a this cross-sectional area is having capital a and current i flows okay inside this conductor when this conductor is placed inside the magnetic field b such that the current okay conductor max an angle what theta with the magnetic field b as shown in this figure right so uh, we want to find out the total force experienced by this conductor 
but as inside this conductor charged particle electrons are there the total force experienced by the charged particle will be charged particle inside this conductor will be the force experienced by this conductor current carrying conductor when placed inside the magnetic field b i am repeating again the total force experienced by the charged particle inside this conductor will be the total force experienced by this current carrying conductor when placed inside the magnetic field got it so we want to find out the total force experienced by those free electrons present inside the conductor got it first of all let's try to find it out the force experienced by a single charge okay single charge minus e that means by the electron as i told you that your force due to this single electron that will be equal to minus e okay b t cross b vector like this right that is what i'm representing here okay so if this is the single force experienced by a single electron then if there are uh, n number of capital n number of uh, electrons present inside this conductor cylindrical conductor then what happened the total force will be equal to what n times this force experienced by a single electron what is this capital n this capital n is a total number of all those electron present inside this what conductor so if your uh, small f is the force experienced by a single electron if there are two electrons only then the total force will be twice of this small f if there are three electrons it will be thrice of uh, this small f so if there are n electrons the total force will be what equal to what n times of the force experienced by a single electron like this so your total f is equal to what n f got it and where n is nothing but this is the total number of force a uh, total number of electrons present inside the conductor got it so if you know the number density of free a uh, number density of these conductors of free electron i mean where n is nothing but this is the number of free electron present per unit volume of the conductor this is what we call it as number density number density of what number density of free electron so number density means total number divided by total area okay so if your n is equal to uh, the number density of free electron number density means what total number of electron divided by its volume volume for this cylindrical subconductor it will be what cross sectional area times its length got it cross sectional area times its length that will give you what volume of the cylinder volume of the cylinder means area of the base into height no so we may take it this length of the cylindrical conductor as height and its cross-sectional area this one you can take it this as its cross-sectional area a so a into l so if we want to find out that n then your n will be equal to what n into a l right so instead of this capital n you try to write as n times of a l where n is nothing but this small n is a number density of free electrons of that particular material of the cylindrical conductor where a is its cross sectional area l is what l is the length of that cylindrical conductor so if you multiply all these things then you will get the total force experienced by all those electrons okay i mean free electrons present inside these cylinder okay right yes <clears throat> so let's try to find out the expression of the total force furthermore in terms of that of your uh, current element and in terms of your 
drip velocity okay you 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 know the relation between drip velocity and the current na no? i is equal to nap n a v d e like that okay so let's try to express in those current element and the magnetic field okay see here your f is equal to minus n a l e v d cross b got it so your n is a number density a l is nothing but the volume of that uh, what cylinder okay this will give you the total number of what electrons free electrons present in that cylinder okay in the cylindrical wire i mean so we know that i is equal to n a b d e no? so instead of that b d e you can replace it by what capital i the relation between your drip velocity and the current we know that i is equal to mm, i is equal to nap n a v d e like this right so instead of that you replace it by this current i got it by current i then you will get it what i l okay instead of this n minus n a what b d e you can replace it by i so that you can express this f vector as i l cross b vector where i l is the current element it is a vector quantity okay current alone is a scalar quantity but if you put it along with this l then that current will be moving along this l only so it is a vector quantity okay current element through that uh, conductor of length l it will be along that and the length of the conductor only so it is a vector quantity okay and why this uh, if you take it only magnitude then there will not be no minus sign here because your current element inside the conductor and the drip velocity of the electron okay inside the conductor they are opposite so one minus is assigned okay so because of this we can replace it this minus n a b d e by i got it so your lorentz magnetic force experienced by the current carrying conductor can be expressed as f is equal to i l b sine theta this is cross product so where theta is the angle between i l and b right so we can express it as i l b sine theta now from this last equation we can take some cases okay we can consider some cases if theta is equal to 0 degree or 180 degree that means if your current carrying conductor is plus parallel to the direction of the magnetic field okay then the current may be in the direction of the electric field uh, a magnetic field b or it may be anti parallel opposite but uh, the current is conductor is placed parallel to the magnetic field no doubt mm -hmm. so the current uh, direction may be in the direction of magnetic field or it may be opposite the, to the direction of magnetic field so if theta is equal to 0 degree or 180 degree then what happens sine of theta that will be equal to 0 therefore what happened f lorentz magnetic force experienced by the current carrying conductor okay the force experienced by the current carrying conductor when placed inside the magnetic field parallel to the direction of magnetic field will experience no force okay and that means your f will be equal to zero why because sine of this zero is also zero sine of 180 degrees is also zero so when you place it here then it will be equal to zero and this is the minimum force okay so thus when a current carrying conductor is placed parallel to the magnetic field it experiences no force right case number two if if your theta is equal to 90 degree that means if your current carrying conductor is placed perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field b then sine of 90 degree will be equal to one when you place it this sine of 90 degree here in this expression of force then it will be i l b and this force is the maximum force experienced by that current carrying conductor so what happened when the current carrying conductor is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field it will experience maximum force which is equal to ilb or just to uh, remember easily you can call it as also bill b i l okay bill 
and this bill f is equal to bill that will be the maximum force okay and the direction of this force okay will be given by your right handed screw rule or you can also call it as right hand rule or right hand thumb rule if you try to curl from the first vector to the second vector then the direction of the thumb will be given uh, the direction of the thumb will be in the direction of this force okay f is equal to i l cross b got it so that direction will be what the direction of the force right so your force experienced by the current carrying conductor when placed inside the magnetic field it will be given by the right handed screw rule or you can say right hand uh, curl rule okay and this F will be perpendicular to both the vectors I L and B vector you can also say that it this F will be in the direction perpendicular to the plane containing I L and B okay you can uh, say in a different ways as you have learned in your class 11 in that cross product of vectors okay with that we will try to come to this end of this to this class thank you